Hello students. Today we are going to learn about the peninsular plateau. A plateau means a table land. And the peninsular plateau lies to the south of the northern plains. This plateau is one of the oldest plateaus of the world. The peninsular plateau is roughly triangular and it has got two distinct parts. The northern part is known as the Malwa plateau and the southern part is known as the Deccan Plateau. This plateau is separated from the northern plateau by two important ranges that is the Vindhyas and the Satpuras. The northern part of the plateau is known as the Malwa Plateau. It looks like this. The Malwa Plateau is bounded by the Aravalis in the west and the Vindhyas and Satpuras in the south. Now this plateau that is the Malwa plateau along with the Bundelkhan plateau, Bagelkhan plateau is highly dissected because there are several rivers which originate from here and so the entire plateau of the north as well as of the south that is the Deccan Plateau is very very broken or dissected. This Malwa Plateau gradually merges with the northern plain and in the east it merges with the Chota Nagpur Plateau. To the west of the Aravalis over here we have the Thar Desert. The Deccan Plateau lies to the south of the Vindhyas. The Vindhya Mountain, which is over here, that is the boundary of the Malwa Plateau. This Deccan Plateau lies to the south of this range that is the Vindhya and another range which is in to the south of the Vindhyas which is known as the Satpura range. The Narmada river passes through the rift valley which has been formed by these two ranges which form the block mountains. The Tapi river runs through the south of the valley of the Satpura. Now these two rivers that is the Narmada and the Tapi they flow westwards and empty themselves in the Arabian Sea. They move through rocky areas before emptying themselves in the Arabian Sea and hence they are not able to form deltas. The Narmada Valley makes a rift valley. It forms or it flows through a rift valley. Now the rift valley has been formed due to the tensional forces 
which is acting or which has been acting on this part of the region because of which the land has subsided and the vindhyas and the satpuras form block mountains through which the river narmada flows and it is here which forms the rift valley the deccan plateau is bounded by hills in the west as well as in the east the western hills are collectively called the western ghats or the sayadris the hills which are part of the western ghats are the satmala hills over here then we have the sayadris here we have the nilgiris in the south the cardamom hills and the anamalai hills anai mudi over here on the anam anai malai hills is the highest peak with a height of about 2695 meters the eastern hills are collectively known as the eastern ghats compared to the western ghats they are much lower and also very discontinuous why are they discontinuous it is mainly because of the deltas which have been formed by the rivers which are coming down from the plateau region and also those which are originating from the sayadris the eastern ghats are also a little further away from the coastal region unlike that of the western ghats which are closer to the coast and they rise steeply against the western coast The northwestern part of the Deccan plateau extending over Maharashtra parts of Gujarat Karnataka and Madhya Pradesh is called the Deccan trap so this is the region which we call as Deccan trap now this region is covered by sheets of lava which flowed out through cracks millions of years and this entire area that is the deccan plateau has actually been formed because of the lava which oozed out from deep inside the earth and quietly and stealthily it spread in this entire region now this part that is the northwestern part has got this kind of a step like structure which is known as the deccan trap now this step like structure has been formed because of the intermittent oozing out of the lava and cooling of it so as the lava oozed out cooled formed a layer another layer was formed after several thousand years and so on led to the formation of this step like structure which is known as the deccan trap now there are many rivers which are flowing in the deccan plateau those which arise in the western ghats flow into the arabian sea so there are several small 
and swift rivers which are originating from the western ghats and they move towards the west and empty themselves in the arabian sea but there are several others which are very long and they flow right across the delta uh, the deccan plateau and falls into the bay of bengal they are the mahanadi the godavari which is known as the ganga of the south then over here we have the krishna with its important tributary the tungabhadra the kaveri they all are long and important rivers of the south the rivers which are moving towards the arabian sea are swift and turbulent while the ones which are moving through the rocky terrain of the deccan plateau are comparatively slower and wider now when we compare the northern rivers that is those which are flowing in the northern plains and those which are flowing in the deccan plateau we find a stark difference because the rivers which are flowing in the northern plains are originating from the himalayas and they are being fed by the melting of snow and rainfall while the rivers in the highlands are only fed by rain because there is no snowfall in the southern part of india or it for example in the western ghats which are not very high as compared to that of the himalayas the himalayan rivers are perennial that is they have got water throughout the year so they can be used for irrigation and navigation while those of the deccan plateau are partly or wholly dry during the summer making them unsuitable for irrigation and navigation the year round the rivers in the northern plains are slow and they flow through long distances on flat plains this makes them easier to navigate but they are also prone to floods however the rivers of the deccan plateau flow through sloping terrain and for major part of their course it is very difficult to navigate them and therefore they are less prone to floods these are the major differences of the rivers which we find in the northern plains and those which we find in the deccan plateau so that is what we have enough time for today thank you